What do you think? Are you taking up beekeeping? <laughs> I am choosing a veil for the wedding. What wedding? Our wedding. You to me. <laughs> do we have to go through with this ridiculous charade? Of course. Everyone saw the Germans execute you. <clears throat> they believe you are your own twin brother. You are living with me and tongues are wagging. Let them wag. Have you no feeling for my reputation? Anyway, it is all arranged. On the morning of the 14th, the church bells will ring out. The neighbors will line the streets. They will throng to the service. The organ will play. You will be waiting at the altar in your top hat and morning suit. <laughs> I will glide down the aisle and smile up at you wearing this. <laughs> what do you think of it? Can you not get a thicker one? <laughs> My key. <laughs> How dare you employ Gestapo dynamite for improper purposes? I'm sorry, Herr Flick. You have a visitor. You sent for me, Herr Flick? Yes, Helga. Take off your uniform. <laughs> Will there be anything else, Herr Flick? Not while you are looking. <laughs> Go away. I am obeying your command, knowing not what is in store for me. All will be revealed in a moment. <laughs> of this I have very little doubt. The Gestapo suspects that the Colonel and General von Klinkerhofen may be involved in a plot to assassinate Hitler. I'm sure this is not so, Hefley. Continue to undress. Yes, Hefley. <laughs> we cannot take any chances. Give me your uniform. Sit in the chair. Yes, Hefley. A listening device will be placed in the office of the colonel by a Gestapo agent disguised as a temporary typist. But the colonel does not need a temporary typist. He will, when you do not turn up for a week. <laughs> Herr Flick, to what are you up? <laughs> I was intending to lock you in here. Now I have no door, we must make other arrangements. Exciting as this may seem, Herr Flick, you are my fiance. Why are you doing this to me? Because I do not wish you to reveal the identity of the Gestapo agent. Who is the Gestapo agent? Me. <laughs> Good morning. <laughs> Where is the coat? He means kite. It is under my skirt. <laughs> Gentlemen, avert your eyes. I hope she did not thunk that we were looking at a nun's knockers. <laughs> Help me to assemble the kite. <laughs> that area will be occupied by one regiment of artillery. What a pretty field. <laughs> In a few months' time, there will be 2,000 men camping here. Make a note of that, Kriver. I already have. <laughs> <laughs> it is very large. The aerial has to be very high to get above the jamming. The wire is connected. There is a strong wind from the wasp. <laughs> it is best 
that we conceal ourselves in the bushes with the radio whilst you get the kite in the air. Here is the wire. I have the microphone and the earphones in the picnic basket with the tomatoes and the cucumbers. <laughs> Michelle must be mad. Does she not think the Germans will see a thing of that size? At 500 feet, it will be just like a little dot. Yvette and I will hold the coat in the ear. On the word go, we will lunch it. <laughs> what do I do? Yeah. Take the wire and run into the wind as fast as you can. And good lick. <laughs> Are you ready? Get it up! Get it up! Right, stand by. One, two, through, go! <laughs> faster! Faster! I am going as fast as I can! Faster! <laughs> oh, well done, Rene! Let out the line! Already I am hearing the crackling. Hello, London. Hello, London. This is Nighthawk calling London. The wind, it, it is very strong up there. It is slipping through my hands. Get it up higher. Get it up higher. It is burning my fingers. I, I cannot... <laughs> <laughs> Hello, hello, London. Hello, London. This is Mrs. Nighthawk calling London. <laughs> you have done very things. <laughs> ah! God, we have lost our new waitress. Good stuff are so difficult to find. <laughs> Quick, follow that nin. <laughs> That will be the assembly area for 250 tanks. General, I know it's top secret, but when do we get to know the date for the invasion? Unfortunately, Hitler depends more on the advice of his astrologers than his generals. He claims to be waiting for a sign. When that sign arrives, he will invade. <laughs> it's my opinion that we are not yet ready. A flying nun is a lucky omen. I should think he'd be off tomorrow. Why do you ask? No reason at all. Wene! <laughs> 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 oh. why are you trying to avoid me? <laughs> I, I just thought we, I thought we might work up to this point. You know, a, a, a romantic stroll down Lover's Lane, a furtive glance in church, a quick peek at you having a bath through the keyhole. Oh, <laughs> well, eh? oh. Now that we are together, let me do something to make you feel warm and wonderful. <laughs> well, you can fill my hot water bottle. <laughs> Hide the bed. No, I meant under it, not, not in Renee. it. Oh, my God, too late. <laughs> oh, Renee, my poor husband. How is the ache in your head? Oh, uh, a little better, my dear. Uh, the peace and quiet are doing me good. <laughs> Especially the peace. You are still very jumpy. Yes, sir. Shall I get him beside you and rub your neck? No, no, no. Oh, that running and chasing yesterday. You must still be very stiff. No more than you would expect. There. I have brought for you a soft boiled egg with soldiers, toast, honey, and a pot of coffee. You are a treasure, Edith. Is there anything else? Yes, uh, could you bring another cup? <laughs> oh, good morning, Monsieur Alphonse. Uh, come to see Madame Edith. She is upstairs giving to her husband the breakfast. That bounder, that orator, that kid, that... 
unprincipled innkeeper. Monsieur Alphonse, please remember, I am his mistress. My apologies, mademoiselle. With my dicky heart, I should not get in such a tiswas. But I am so consumed by jealousy that I am forgetting that we Frenchmen have this great tradition of having it off like rabbits. <laughs> Dear, beautiful madame, oh. I have an urgent message for you. From the resistance? No, from me. Oh. Come into the back room. I love you, I love you. <laughs> At last, we are alone. Hello! <laughs> Now, Monsieur Alphonse, what is your message? I'm a very busy woman. Dear lady, it is many weeks now that I have loved you from afar. I think of you day and night. Even when I am embalming, it is your face that haunts me. <laughs> haunts me through the fluid. I cannot contain my passion any longer. I must kiss those tempting, sensuous lips. Oh, Monsieur Alphonse, you are very naughty. But since you put it so nicely, you may have one little peck. Oh, madame. Mm. <laughs> Monsieur Alphonse! <laughs> oh. My beautiful friend. Eh? <laughs> 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 ah, Helga. <laughs> Look at what my mama sent for us from Italy. What? The black of the market salami. <laughs> Taika the sniff. He's a beautiful, no? They are present for the beautiful lady, Signora Edis. First she get the flowers, then she get the sausages, then she get the me. Oh, thank you, Captain Alberto. You are most gallant. <laughs> now I go to the barber for the cut of the hair, so I look for the ladies, the pizza niza. <laughs> See ya. Go. No, 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 no. We have mixed them all up. Now we do not know which is which. Then we can't sort them out here. Too many people about. Take them away and hide them, Rene. Oh, Lovely sausages. <laughs> uh, we'll buy a sausage from a, a poor old wandering sausage seller. Get lost. <laughs> It is I, Leclerc. Go away, we are over-sausaged. <laughs> I have for you the batteries from the submarine. Eh? Eh. You will notice <laughs> that each one has got a terminal, electric terminal, at uh, this end and this end. In which <laughs> Mooning. <laughs> I am wicking in a ginger fashion because my policeman's pints are full of dynamoot. Moat is inside the sausages. Thank you, officer. You could not have come at a better time. <laughs> now get about your business. General von Klinkerhofen is getting out of his car. General von Klinkerhofen, but hide them. Hide them. Where am I supposed to hide them? Uh, He's coming. Uh, oh my God! What? What? Ah. Yes, Oh, 
ting går over for den. Hej, Hitler! Hej, Hitler! Hitler! Batteries have been stolen from a miniature submarine. Whoever has those batteries in their possession will be shot. You will come with me and we will conduct an immediate search of the town. Do you understand? Yes, Herr General. Now go! <laughs> Follow me! René? Which one of them has the batteries down his trousers? Why do you cry? Oh, poor René. At this very moment, he could be suffering torture at the hands of the Colonel. Tears will not help him. Only a bold, brave plan can save him now. <laughs> and we do not have one. Good morning. <laughs> Is that English idiot who speaks bad French? <laughs> Maybe he can help us. Ah! <laughs> when he has been arrested. Yes, I just hid the bad news. <laughs> we must rescue him before he drops us all in the chute. <laughs> but what can we do? Madame Edith is beside herself. If he reveals my disguise, I will be up the creek without a piddle. <laughs> It is the time for the action. I will rescue my brave Renny. I will storm into the office of the Colonel. I will show him this hand grenade. I will remove the pin with my teeth. And I will tell him to release Renny or we will all die. This is Roski in daylight. <laughs> Why do you not wait until it is Dick? <laughs> we must strike now. Make sure the coast is clear. I will look outside. Yes, indeed. I'm <laughs> Rosalini. You are very small for the army. Mind your own business. <laughs> You, I was going to blow up his office with a grenade. A grenade? My God, give that to me before you blow us all up. No! Edith, promise me you will never touch one of these things again. Oh, very well. But I will keep this as a souvenir. <laughs> Five minutes, and you demolish the town convenience. <laughs> Welcome, General, to your commandeered vineyard. We've been told your 32 is very good. Do you have a sample? I have samples for every year. But I doubt the General would be able to test them all. <laughs> this is the 38. 
<coughs> Pardon. Taste your own wine? Of course. Excellent. <laughs> the connoisseurs, of course, do not consume the wine. They spit it out. Of course. We must do the same. We must not look like barbarians. <laughs> Is the year 1937. It may be a little rough in the after test. Thank you. It is not good. He's spitting it all out. I was relying on him consuming at least three glasses. Good. Then we can give up. Now get your shoes off and start treading. Oh, no, we have the other plan. Beneath the wheelchair of your wife's mother is a big shell case filled with explosives. It is connected to an alarm clock, which Mimi will now activate. <laughs> Winnie, they must not blow up my mother. No. Not at this close range, anyway. <laughs> Don't worry. She has been well briefed. When the alarm clock rings, she will leap out of the chair and take cover. Five seconds later, there will be a big explosion. Did you activate the clock? Yes. I found this on the floor. That is the detonator. Will it explode without it? No. But it will fizz a lot. <laughs> What is this one? The 32. Excellent. Do you not think so, Colonel? Quite a poem. And you have six cases. Helga, you must try this. Madam, do you enjoy wine? Enjoy it, young man. I am a connoisseur. I know that we are enemies, but not, I hope, in the presence of great wine. Please. Allow me. She cannot hear without her ear trumpet. Get her out. What is your opinion, madam? Well, I think she's a very good. 